and welcome everybody out there in D&D land. I hope you're having a fantastic uh, hump day. It is the morning of hump day and I hope you all are enjoying it as best as you can. Before we jump into the action, we have a few short announcements that we always have to make. And if you are enjoying this content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in watching us live, go check out twitch.tv slash Joey, where you can jump in most days of the week, multiple times a day, and sit down while we play D&D and shit. We're very helpful in chat if anybody has questions. We are more than happy and accommodating to catch people up and explain exactly what the fuck is going on. And in, if you are interested in participating in some of our games, like this one, but not this one, we do have open slots available. Reach out to me and let me know. You can watch live. You can jump on my Twitter. You can check me out on uh, Roll20. There's any number of different means. Comment on my YouTube video. I will comment back. I will, you know, reach out to you. Just let me know if you're interested. They are pay-to-play games, but aside from that, let's get to it. Mikit, what happened last session? Well, let's see. After having dealt with rental rules, we finally managed to enter the library of ancient Sacronia. Mikit, of course, was very excited. We did some... Actually, there was a few interesting security measures. Among them being lights that zap you if you didn't sign in. Chico Ancient Chaconia took the libraries very seriously, apparently. Of course. But once we got that figured out, there was also the book that just helps guide you to whatever you're looking for if you say it out loud. True, right? Uh, and then the magical door, we, we didn't really figure out how it worked before we all tried it. Memory serves me right, Kale Wan was the first to go through it. Mm -hmm. The key followed shortly after. The magic of the door means we ended up on different floors. Kate ended up all alone on the third floor, which is restricted to native draconians and academian types, if I remember correctly. Allies to the academies of Draconia. Which you qualify as. Yep. Which left Mikate all alone on the third floor where none of the others were allowed to reach him. He got a lot of reading done. And plans to probably set up a teleportation circle somewhere in these ruins once he's high enough level. Wait, that's matter. Oh well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually. <laughs> yeah. You're a wizard. You're the only person who can actually refer to levels levels of spells and shit like that because you're the only one who knows the actual shit around it wizards are smart i'll try to keep that in mind for the future anyway kale vaughn and later ein when she went to follow him and got got to put to the right floor all right is Rita and mine followed right after each other. It spot on the first floor as they tried to search for what we actually came here to find. Namely, where we can find the different Draconian noble families' resting, the resting places. After that, they attempted to pull, pull the party back together. And that mean with Kale Vaughn on the second floor with a solo, I don't remember precisely what it's called, but the solo model, you sometimes have them over cribs, except very big, taking up quite a portion of the room. 
already. Unfortunately, Kaelvan ended up being surprised. Uh, no, right, there was a Rite that got there and ended up being surprised. Or, yeah, I do believe that's what it was called. Rite got on that second floor. Zia ended up being surprised and made the ultimate sin of destroying bugs. But then they did searching the reading research there. Back to the first floor. Well, tried to figure out where I am. That's when we figured out that I was on the only floor that no one knows could get access to. Luckily, it, uh, it wasn't that long before I ha had to hygiene and self-maintenance. Despite some rather inappropriate talk about the uses of pressure dissertation. After that, with knowledge, with the never, with the knowledge we acquired, we ran out to the tree where one of the noble family's second son was buried. So we could figure out where to go for the whispering trees. On the way there. We came across two white dragons. They were young and stupid, but they are still dangerous. We ended up killing them, though. Got some arguments from it, too. Have I missed anything important, Dion? Um, well, other than the fact that you all did take a short rest in order to craft those augments and imbue them into armor and such, um, were you guys the first group with the new augment table? I think we were. Okay, so we're all good caught up on that. Very well. So, you all finish creaking your bones, starting to readjust yourselves and getting ready to push further. The hardest part about being an adventure is not being allowed to fucking sleep when you want to. So, did everybody roll a satisfactory number of hit dice? Yep. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yep. Didn't take any damage. So. Uh, go ahead and gloat <laughs> about your ability to fly slash levitate. Oh, he was. Hedrish Blasters. <laughs> one, I, I roll one last one just for. Uh, just for every, everyone is full. <clears throat> Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. That's fair. Don't worry. There's no trouble after this. I merely search for enemies trying to snake up on us. <laughs> Already. So. Uh, yeah, I'll. Uh, I think. Yeah, because I had the hex on Omen still, so he's cursed for another seven hours. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nice. You have seven uh, more hours of hex so long as you maintain concentration. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, during the battle, <laughs> is the like ice feel the what do you call it? The symmetrical ice feel. It looks like diamonds or some shit. Is Those it things? still untouched? Yeah. Yeah. None of them seem to have moved. Oh. Since I remember Kill throwing a rock at it. Yes, so he I did. Thought the battle would do anything. Hmm. So it's clearly I mean, unnatural. Then. Should we try to find uh, the lair of those dragons? Uh, I mean, dragons are orders. That's a possibility that they will find some stuff in the city that we wouldn't have. Some stuff of in interest, in archaeological interest, mm -hmm. or Probably, uh, monetary yeah. interest. Maybe they have a, you know, like a treasure or something. There must have been some other foolish adventurers who come here once or twice, and uh, maybe they took care of them. I mean, I if I could hazard a guess, it's probably 
in those ice crystal fields. On the other hand, where well, there's a dragon's horde, there's a dragon. And well, the next... we just killed the dragons. There can okay. easily be more. Uh, Jiro, question. Saw, dude. Uh, would I know anything about white dragon habits or anything like that? What treasure they prefer if they travel alone or in small groups or anything Roll like that? Roll me a nature or history check. Your call. Uh, nature, nature or history. Nature dragons. Nature or history. Which one's higher? History. 18? Typically speaking, dragons of that age aren't known for sticking together with one another most of the time they're really isolated creatures but then again those were very young dragons um yeah very young dragons I... very uh unlikely that they would ever be paired up together but then again that is kind of it, it already happened like there was two of them which that's not supposed to happen most of the time. Um, and then when you look up to the crystals that you see, um, yeah, those are white dragon eggs. I will relay this to the party. So, your estimate is those two were hatchlings, but... So that, that would mean that mom is not uh, not very far away. Which means we should get out of here as soon as possible. I mean, <clears throat> our target is in there, I think. Uh, well, yes, that's that's not good. Um, hatchlings. So, well, uh, I mean, if there is a m mom. Um, do you think that one is uh, related somehow to the one that destroyed the city? It is possible, but I doubt it would be the exact one. Because that one is yeah. definitely dead, yes? Said yes, so earlier. Yes, okay, good, good. But what, what I'm curious is that we weren't very, like, quiet fighting the Ashling, so... If mom was around, she would already have come to defend a progenitor, like a kids, or is it is it not something that dragons do? Um, would any of you realistically have any understanding of dragon culture or habits? I.e. those of you who speak draconic. Roll nature checks. Because one part of learning a new language is usually learning a little bit about their culture, so you have a chance of knowing things. Ein, um, dragon eggs can usually stay dormant for 50 plus years. Uh, you know, at least 50 years for them to hatch, but sometimes they do sit there for a much longer period of time. There's the potential that they are either direct children of the Frigid Doom, or they are the direct descendants of the children of the Frigid Doom. Also, those were a little too big for barely hatchlings. But they did talk like hatchlings. Mm -hmm. I will tell them that. Uh, yeah, I will relay the information to the party and say that, well, whatever it is, the, we won't have exact estimates of when those eggs will hatch since. They can stay dormant for a long time, 50 years or more. How old do you think and, those uh, Ashling were? Uh, it doesn't look barely hatched. It should be a while. Although they talk like uh, really young children. Do you know if the uh, if white dragon mothers, are, are, are they usually very... Uh, maternally oriented like do they stay for a long time to protect their kids it doesn't seem like that is the case to me uh, uh, you don't know can't. yeah I can't be too sure yeah. but considering how long 
it has been since the frigid doom or i have no idea if it's uh it's exact age or is it like their great grandchildren or something but so oh. far it seems to be like there's nothing to uh defend them they were left alone for quite a while well the history of fuck machina is like something like a century ago so and dragons they take a while to grow up so if those uh were 30 to 40 years old dragons it means that the eggs would be maybe like 70 years old and there will be directly kids of Varugal. and in this situation well we don't risk to uh go and find another ancient white dragon uh around here and we can go and find if there are any old like i mean it's at most two hours that we will lose we're not very uh tackled by time anyway uh general would i know if the dragons are very territorial or not oh fucking incredible yeah uh, so incredibly steps, territorial uh, so if anyone steps into their area they will defend it or just chase them away or something <laughs> no kill yeah no yeah, like they that. are apex predators you step mm. on their shit, they murder you. Or die trying, right. unless they're smarter and more mature than these ones. Mm, okay. So I'll... Well, so far it seems okay, since, as you all should know, dragons are very territorial. One step into the area, and they'll try to kill you no matter what. So far, it's relatively peaceful after these two died. Right. Um, well, I we, I start looking around if there is any entrance uh, grottoes area where they could have a, like an entrance to, to a place where they would have eaten something. Uh, so, um, one thing I'll point out to you is both of them burrowed. So, uh -huh. yes. <laughs> Anything is their territory. They have a natural digging speed. Burrow speed. Uh, so you more than likely would be looking below the surface, which you don't have that sight yet. Mm. Well, if you uh, if you find anything interesting, I could probably look uh, look through it for you. I mean, we could also try making our way to the area that we suspect most. Since our target is already there, and might as well just try to keep it quiet this time. Right, well, I don't think the tomb will go anywhere, but we have a better chance of finding the the dragon's lair now, I think, if we if we put our... I do agree with Kreef. If there is any tempest, uh, snow tempest that comes in and that will hide any kind of tracks or... Uh Kreef, were you done speaking? Sorry. Mm, well, it's it's okay. It's um uh well, yes, that's what my my point was. Uh, we could probably I mean, they burrowed through the snow and ice. Yes, but we could uh maybe backtrack a little bit find the I mean, some of you must be expert you know, outdoorsmen, aren't you? Oh, heavens no. I'm no outdoorsman. That's why I have all of you. Well, I said some of you. Maybe not. All right. Well, never mind. Looks towards the worshipper of the Wild Mother. You see any trees, boy? <laughs> uh, yeah, if you remember my narration, there is a tree yeah. roughly like a mile I... and a half away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I meant I meant in terms like forest grew basically. <laughs> <laughs> Since Terry is in a snow field. Mm -hmm. Outdoor? You're an outdoor person. We're outdoors. What does it matter if it's a different environment than what you're used to? It's a different door, my boy. <laughs> it's a different door. But oh, also, yeah, there's, the, case. there's the problem. Sorry. Oh, 
No, go, go ahead. All right. Uh, there's the problem of these uh, eggs, if there are any more of them. Maybe we should uh, take care of them as well. Or, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, a white dragon egg can be sold for profit? Only if I can keep one of them. You want to keep one? As a pet or something? Right. Arite, I can tell you right now, you are smart enough to know you do not have an animal handling expertise to be able to remotely handle a dragon. That is fair. You would be smart enough to know this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how words, large I are don't the have eggs? An intelligence dump. No, animal handling is wisdom, but you would need expertise in that shit to remotely have a chance. That's a DC 30. Easy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how big are those eggs? Uh, roughly, you get up underneath one and look at it. Uh, about from this side that you're seeing, roll me a perception check, but only about a foot and a half. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, only about a foot and a half. It is part mostly imbued into the wall. Well, maybe we can, uh, like, uh, cut it out somehow and uh, put it on one of those uh, sleds or whatever you call it. Well, even if we are able to transport one of these eggs, where, uh, where in the, where in the world would we be able to actually sell one? Better idea. Why would we want to bring one into the tomb? Oh, well, yes, that is fair. Maybe we leave them be and take them I with mean, us when we leave. I mean, maybe there's a floor trap and we can use the eggs as wheat. But what about this, um, you know, the, uh, what's, uh, what's the name again? These uh, Shorhas uh, rulers. Uh, I mean, maybe they have... The dynasty? Uh, yes, yes. Maybe they would have uh, interest in some, uh, in some dragon eggs if they could tame them and uh, somehow, you know, use them. Aren't they a bit like at odds with this um, the empire or what's it called over there maybe they would use them for some you know weapons of war on the one side my people is more used to uh, big worm burying below ground and flying overhead in the sky on the other side they've tamed purple worms so might be able to tame some dragon some people might be able to, but dragons are intelligent creatures. Like it's not something that is tameable very easily. Well, maybe. I have heard that the white ones are probably not quite as intelligent as the others. Maybe. Uh, yeah, they are the more probably the most bestial of the chromatic dragons. I, I turn to uh, a righty and, and smirk. Oh, uh, listen, no there is a difference Arita, between uh... the dragons and the dragon porn. I am dragon porn. We are like you, or Mikit, or Ayn, or Kale, individual conscious beings. Yeah, oh. Kale, no need to be racist like that. Ooh. Oh, yes. uh, forbidden topic. Oh, no, no, no. Call him out on that shit. I encourage <laughs> it. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, anyway, uh, maybe we should, uh, well, see if we can find some uh, hidden entrance or something. Into, I mean, they must have a lair or something. Maybe, maybe a small cavern or something carved from the ice. How about we deal with this after we go to the main reason we are here? Just out right. of... Fair enough. I would argue otherwise, because of the very reason 
Chris is saying. If we have any chance to find where they come from, we need to get tracks. Well, my father has a good saying. You should never ignore a good distraction. I guess when you said there are no distractions, even good ones. It helps me focus on a goal. Alright. To the tomb, then. To the tomb! So, you all continue walking along the pathway. For roughly about a mile, as you get closer and closer towards the tree. Now, you all notice something very interesting about the tree itself. It appears to be partially buried underground and has these large stone structures conformed all around it. The base of the tree buried roughly about 10, 15 feet under snow. Well, usually tombs are underground, so we uh, might just have to uh, dig our way in. And I take a shovel that I may have in my... Do I have a shovel in my pack? Well, first off, let me bring you all over to the map. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Big black. I see the upper... Well, now I see something. Are you taking it's, you um, I it's uh, war. can indeed see. It's it's dark. Yeah, everything is gray. Uh, all right, I'm getting your character down. Who's got that? Yay! So, you all begin walking forward and look at these very large stone structures around the top of this tree. Again, that is buried roughly, probably about 15 feet. How much is 15 feet? Like, it's three meters? Three, yeah. four meters? Uh, five meters. Five meters. Damn. Hmm. So. Is that? Can I see if I if I look at the the top, um, like this this one here? Um, is there any inscription writings on the top of the the stone structures? Uh, roll me an investigation roll, as these stones are fairly uh -huh. aged and have been withstanding a tremendous amount of weather. Oh, I forgot who I was talking to. Um, Kyle, this first stone you walk up to and you start circling around, um, it does have a draconic name written upon it. All righty, would you, would you mind translating and i show him where the well it's it's written like in like in common like so i, I the same name with two points or is it like specific script that i can understand it, it is a specifically uh dra dragon born name so okay. it's something you would recognize as being dragon born uh that one is can I read it? Like, can I? Can I? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just now. getting the name okay. for you. I'm getting the right name for you. Okay, right. okay, okay. Cruel Drug Rocks. Can I? Can I see if on the smaller one here there is a name? Vimtith Odrish. 
Okay. Um, look, fellow, I think that those are tombstones. There are names on it. So let's just sign the one from um, Tiberius Tomwood. Mm-hmm. All right. Ooh. So yeah, um, walking around, Mikit, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you sh- uh, can see if there is any magic on one of these stones or any of them. Hmm. Good idea. I'll inspect each of them with the uh, special eyes. Alrighty, Arite, I do need you to roll me a history with advantage. Ooh, okay. The eyes of Herency do not discern anything. Arite. Um, Krurel Drograx was one of the Ravenites uh, who fought and died going up against the Frigid Doom. Same with Vimtith Odrish. Um, I believe these are all people who died fighting the Frigid Doom. <clears throat> Seems to be the right place then. So, as you begin walking around everybody, uh, you make it over to this side. Kyle, over there. Yep. There you go. Uh, and this one is labeled Tiberius Stormwind. I found it. Now you take out the shovel and start digging. Okay. I'm going to go over to the tree and just look at it. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, this type of tree shouldn't be growing here. Where you come from, you actually know a great deal about trees. Some of your best friends, you know. Mm. But, uh, (laughs) this is some type of strong redwood tree. And Mm. redwood trees should not be out in the cold and should not be living in the cold and shouldn't have their green leaves filled. That's unnatural. There's definitely something strange about this tree. It's, uh, well, it's alive for one thing, but it's, I mean, it shouldn't be this, um, or should you a vibrant or uh, well it shouldn't be doing this well in uh, for the climate I mean I mean I can talk to it if you want to uh, uh, well sure yes that would be helpful uh, Flora <laughs> speaks your word right Flora if it is a sentient tree it may speak yeah, I'll try to greet it to see if it's like sentient or not. Okay. Flora is less of a verbal language and more of an expression of emotion and you do get the sense of anger as well as sadness. Uh, For one thing, it's it looks sentient, it's angry, and it also has a hint of feeling of sadness in it. Are you able to ask it why? Mm, Let me see if it's stable enough to uh, reply to that Uh, and I start gesturing it to ask the reason Uh, when you gesture over towards the digging Kyle the anger flares flares even more oh 
yeah, it doesn't take well to people digging out the, you know, corpses. Well, I was thinking maybe it was because it was lonely. You don't see many trees out here. Uh, no. I mean, I think it has solemn respect towards uh, the ones buried here. That's why it's angry towards the grave digging. It, it must be angry at the sun because, like, I I'll mean, no smell. Take a few steps away from the tree. Okay. <laughs> if, it, if it's angry, I don't want to uh, further <laughs> antagonize it. You are fully aware of what trees are capable of. <laughs> Indeed. I, I've grown. I've grown up in in Rosona. I've like tree with with um, green trees. It's not part of my like day to day life. Yeah. Uh, what's that yeah. noise? Bang bang bang. Sorry. Yeah. My uh, my girlfriend. Yeah. Sorry. Ah uh, okay. It sounded like cooking. Uh, <laughs> I will try to like placate the tree and like explaining. We only wish to communicate, and then we'll uh, pay proper respects after. Right. Uh, it gives you a sense of uh, curiosity. Mm -hmm. You can speak and... to it, though. Yeah. It can only respond through emotions because trees don't have mouths most of the time. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll do this simple gesture uh, of the worship of a one mother and just promise it. I won't disrespect. Roll of persuasion. Oh, no. Charisma rolls. What do Those I trees can about? talk. <laughs> just like a certain tree that's always big. Uh, persuasion. Boom, 17. You have a plus one on a scale of a charisma roll? That's all <laughs> proficiency. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. The tree still gives off a hint of sadness, um, though its anger seems to subside quite a bit. Yeah, and I'll bow to as a tree, and I'll turn to a terrace. Well, I tried telling it that we only wish to find information and not disrespect the dead. So after we ask it a few questions, and we should not take anything from this area. It's not angry now. It's still sad. All right. I go over to the tree again, and I I tap the trunk a couple times, like reassuring me everything will be fine. We are uh, just here to uh, on academical purposes. You Do know. you speak Flora? Uh, I speak Sylvan. Sylvan's a little different than Flora. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm speaking to it in Sylvan, though. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it probably understands natural. you, but you you don't understand it. Yeah. That's, that's the uh, one downside of not knowing Floor. It's like, you know, yeah, I kind of get you, but you're like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Can I try, uh, like, a, I don't know, what persuasion roll or something like that to just. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I mean, you made it pretty passive towards the endeavor it's just upset that you do have to do this it understands uh, it's just yeah. it's upset that you have to uh am i right to assume that all these rocks have names on it so it's like a tomb right every single one yeah mm -hmm. yeah i'll just walk towards every one and just put in the herbs as a form of uh, the dried herbs that i have left as a form of respect and just Lightly uh, uh, bow my head to his Ishan. And I'll just, uh, well, just uh, like gently stroke the, <laughs> the trunk of the tree. 
Like, yeah, yes, you are, you, are, you are very beautiful leaves and all that. It's uh, remarkable how, how able you are to persevere in this environment. And, uh, you know, I like how... <laughs> I'll just try to I like... keep, it, <laughs> keep it distracted or something. I like how uh, there's two people sweating, digging digging up, and then the rest are like, uh, one guy is seducing the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh I the tree does give off a little bit of a shy but happy sense. Oh no. <laughs> it blushed. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but anyways, right. Arite. Right. Are as... get... Yeah, Mikit. Are we going to get into a complicated explanation of how trees romance? Oh, no. no. No, we will not. <laughs> I don't deal with normal romance in my games, so no. Uh, Arite. Yes. After looking at all of these different hedges, all of these different tombstones, more or less, the inner circle seems to be the ones that sacrifice themselves when the frigid doom first arrived in order to allow ravenites down below and uh drag what are the other ones called again dragon bloods dragon bloods to escape find shelter recuperate themselves that's the inner circle uh the outer circle are the ones that worked to preserve and protect everybody after the inner circle failed during the time that the frigid doom ruled over draconia and many of them did go up and fight against it and die but many of the others were just the people who stayed back to help them important to note there are uh draco bloods and ravenites in that inner circle as well as the outer circle. The Stormwind family was one of the few Dragonites that that always tried to make things right for the Ravenites, despite the fact that they couldn't with the other political system. Okay. They were part of the uprising that was already being moved by the Ravenites. I will relay this to Kale as he is digging. Partially excited to share this information. Kale, roll me a uh, athletics check. Seventeen. You are very happy to start doing this. Uh, you use a couple, I believe you have something that heats things up. Uh, you use some of those, probably a torch, if not magic. And you start breaking up the snow, moving it out of the area. And you break down after the many, many, many feet of snow. Um, and this is taking you roughly about two hours to dig down that low. And uh, you're a sweating pile of just ugh, at the end of this where you finally get down towards the surface, uh, the ground beneath it. Thank you for your help, guys. I, I think, I've, I think I'm, I'm on the bottom now. I hope you had a, a wonderful time with the tree. You should be thankful there's no roots flying into your face right now. <laughs> it, wanted it, to, it wanted to slap you really bad. <laughs> yeah, well... I solo the tree. <laughs> this is uh this is the ground. Now we need to find the corpse. Do so, you want to relay me or should I keep digging? I'll, I'll help you. Hmm. Alright. The what two of you say? swap out and Kyle wait, what were you about to say? And I was about to see if someone else is taking the digging, I'll assist them. Alrighty. So, you swap out. You jump into the hole, Arite, and uh, Kyle, you're finally able to take a break and catch your breath. It's exhausting work, 
shoveling snow, let alone digging 15 feet of it. Ugh. I don't know if it's the cold, but I don't feel my arms anymore. That's just the cold. Do not worry about it. That's called frostbite. <laughs> <laughs> so, Arite, now you give me an athletics check. With advantage, because Ayn is helping? Yeah. 26. Good help. You heat up the surface of the ground below you all uh, as best as you can, and then you just start shoveling and digging and throwing the dirt up as much as possible. Once you get about five feet deep, and this takes you roughly about an hour as well, um, you do hit the outside of a, of a box. I will attempt to unbury the box as quickly as possible. Gently as possible. You do, and it's a very, very simple box. The only thing on the outside is carved into it is the name Tiberius Stormwind. Uh, Big Heat, can you do the thing where you make things lighter? Uh, I prefer preferably we don't take it out. We just open it and talk to it here. If that is ideal, that is fine. Uh, is yeah, the coffin I... uh, nailed shut? Um, yes. Mm. I have a crowbar. Here. Hey! It's like you guys have a grave robber in your... I mean, uh, archaeologist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. uh, do you to mind be fair, having... archaeologists are just grave robbers that wait a little longer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that depends the kind of archaeologist. You're not necessarily... Growing about around tunes, you can just. Yeah. Uh, Kale, do yeah. you mind dropping the crowbar down here? I'm standing uh, with you down here. Like I, I didn't even have the the, the strength to go up. Um, You're just by, sitting. By the way, Kale, uh, I, I hope you're prepared with your questions, cause I'm just worried that I won't be able to hold the person speaking here for too long. Well, let's let's think about it before then. Uh, well, the reason why we're here is sorry, where are my notes? Uh, is ultimately to find out where are the burial site of the three trees. Because well, the only thing that we know is that the on the northern mountain ridge of the Dreamer's Ravine. And it, the only known entrance was only known by the upper echelon of Dracula family, knowledge shared by the second born of each families. So I think we could just start by introducing ourselves and say that the Freddy Doom is dead and good dead for a good chunk of time and ask him, well, directly where we can find this bloody entrance. Uh, I am out of curiosity. Will he be forced to respond honestly? Uh, no. It's up to the dead person themselves. Because in the end, we have to persuade it to answer the question, and it probably won't answer it directly. Sometimes they just speak in riddles, sometimes they just speak out ominous hints, so it's pretty much a hit of me since speaking with dead people tends to drain a lot of their own body, in a way, that is. Meaning we will have to be quick and hope that it is not a riddle noted. Yep. Well, we have um, a lot of intelligent people here, if we, even if we get riddles after all. So I don't think that would be much of a problem. Next thing you know, we spend the next 10 years in real life deciphering the riddle. <laughs> I mean, since it's Tiberius, I'm more worried that he'll end up talking in circles before coming to the main point. <laughs> Alright, so we ask where the entrance to the... I guess temple with the three trees is then 
I guess that's that that is their main point that we're here, right, Kale? Yeah. Hmm. So what I think that we need we need to ensure that you know the ones we're talking about. So let's how many questions can we ask? Five? That that depends on how long it takes for them to answer. Give uh one moment, let me check the duration. Ten minutes. Yeah, ten minutes. So assuming it does it answers quickly, so you have plenty of time in ten minutes. I'm just worried it just says fuck it and just disappear early. That's all. Okay. So what I would suggest is to focus our question in the beginning on the three trees. The three trees. Let's start by asking him if he knows the story. Because if he doesn't, we'll need to find a way to rephrase it in a, in a way that he understands. Uh, then we'll ask him if if he knows where the three trees are buried so that he can give us a general location of where to look for. And third, we need to ask in the location if there are landmarks uh, in indicating the entrance of the burial site. And once we have all that and we have pinpoint, uh, then we still have two questions. If we need to ask questions about uh, the um, severed king uh, because it's part of the culture of the... So Kyle, as you've been describing this, uh, you notice on one of the branches above you, a raven has flown down and perched. Is it, is it one of your familiars? Uh, I don't think so. None of us have raven. No. I'm Hopefully stuck. Not like, into a raven. I'm stuck 20 feet into the ground, so I have no idea what y'all are talking about. <laughs> well, he's stuck five feet above you, and he sees it above him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it is not mine. Oh, Susanna is currently at that. Can't I, can I just gesture at the raven and we speak to see, like, if there's a problem? You wish to communicate with it in uh, B-Speak? Yeah. Uh, B-Speak I... is actual sounds, and based off of the intelligence of the creature, you can actually speak with it. So, mm -hmm. what do you say? I will ask, the, I'm just asking, like, is there an issue or... Shit, it, I forgot what the word was. <laughs> Sorry, brain farted. The yeah, what I, word? I, I just, I, no, I just ask it like, uh, is there a problem or uh, are we are we trespassing too much? Something like that. What are you doing? We only wish to ask about the tree trees. Why? That is all. This part of a vision given to us. It looks at your holy symbol and cocks its head to the side. Roll persuasion, Ayn. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, Who would have I thought taking the... the homebrew languages is useful? I mean, it comes with purple creation. <laughs> Hey. Uh can I use the yes. game inspiration? Yes, you Thank can. You. Persuasion. That's a 19. The raven flies down onto your shoulder, Ein. And it's Bigger than your head as a raven. Like, it's a pretty big bird. And it looks down. Is this needed for something? Mm -hmm. It's part of the 
mission given to us and part of the dreams that were sent to us. Mingle the dreams. Hey. Thank you. Plug it. <laughs> hey. It I looks at you, you kind of... shared dreams. No, get out. <laughs> <laughs> It looks at you sideways and then takes off flying somewhere else. I would like to send my familiar uh, to follow it. Okay. What is your familiar uh, right now? My familiar? Yeah. It is probably on the top of the the, the hole. Like it's not been digging with me, but what is it? Someone... What is it? Oh, it's an owl. It's an owl. Okay. So it's as fat. It's faster than Raven. Okay. So you send your owl flying after it. Yeah. Uh, what creature type is it, by the way? Uh, it's a animal. No. Is it a fae? Is it a fiend? What? Find familiar. You choose one of these types, and that's oh, what it is. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it would be most likely considered as a fay, I'd say. Because okay. The Moonweaver and all that jazz. So, uh, have it roll a perception check. Still, it has advantage. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we are. Oh. 14. 14. It's not quite sure when it happened, but the raven seems to have just evaded it or something. Being a family itself, would it consider it like possibly? Just I mean, a there's always a possibility, familiar? but your familiar is dumb as dog shit, so I mean. Hmm. <laughs> It has like a three intelligence. <laughs> yeah, <it's... laughs> two, two actually. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it just yeah, it must have like took a wrong turn or did it turn? It can't really remember. It's not quite sure. But yeah. Okay. Well, in any case, we should do this quick and as respectful as we can. Since. <clears throat> Any longer, uh, I'm just worried that we'll be blamed for desecrating a ground. I will take the crowbar and open the coffin. Alrighty. You break into this grave site and rip open the coffin itself. And when you look inside, you see a very well-preserved dragonborn body. Adorned in... A few metal trinkets that could suffice as armor, but mostly very long wizarding robes and regal gems, beautiful tapestries that has the Stormwind crest on it, right? Tucked underneath their head, almost to prop them up a little more comfortably. All right, do your thing and, and be quick. I'll just uh, weave a few of my uh, herbs and stuff to make it like a like a what what was that olive crown that Romans wear kind of like that before putting it on the coals and a wreath yeah ah yeah that is uh, I'll, and before I channel the spell which for since it lasts 10 minutes, after 10 minutes, the crown will disappear into ashes. Okay. So, you cast the spell and place it upon the forehead, and you feel the magic reaches out, but the body does not respond. Hmm. Would I know, like, if the spell is rejected, or is it just passes not, through it? It's not rejected. It seems to have like reached out, but kept going. So there's there's like no lingering spirit to like pull up, pull in then. 
well, speak with dead does not pull at the spirit, it pulls at the memories. Yeah, the memory is kind of like that. So, with a heart. <laughs> you're just, you're not quite sure. It didn't really latch on to anything. Hmm. McKeet and Creve, however, as you are the only two not in this hole, you both begin hearing something. What is like that? There's something's burning. You look behind yourselves, and there is a small fire and a dragonborn sitting at it with a raven on their shoulder. Salutations. Hello. I'm Tiberius Stormwind. Oh. Somewhat unusual, but I'll take that. Um, uh, please, come sit down by the fire. It's uh, deathly cold out there. <laughs> Fair point. Pleasure to meet you, by the way. Pleasure. I'm going to roll an insight check on this guy. Sure. <laughs> kind of hard to read. However, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mikit, as you go sit down beside them, they do stretch their hand out towards you for a shake. Okay, I'll return it. All right. Your hand passes right through theirs. Ah, so I see this is just a formality then. Uh, regardless, uh, thank you very much, Vex. <clears throat> please, oh. uh, all of you, uh, please. <laughs> Come join me. me. Uh, uh, I yeah. find it do, hard do to hear. Believe you aren't you dead? Uh, I am, in fact, dead. Uh, for quite some time now. Uh, it's been roughly about a uh, hundred and three years or so. Uh, uh, it has been a little bit of an adjustment, but I've grown used to it. I believe. Mm. <clears throat> Ten minutes. Um, we hear it from okay. the, 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 oh yeah all of you here talking out there and crackling a fire sorry i'll play the fire again there you go <laughs> yeah i'll start climbing out i probably uh, would really not your typical speak of that results then i mean considering the people is probably something of a higher order i wouldn't be surprised it's a pleasure to meet you by the way ah you as well so, Sorry uh, about disturbing your rest. Oh, by all means, disturb me. I don't mind it very much. Um, I, I did put in a request a long time ago, of course, uh, so that we could potentially have this conversation if it was ever needed or came up as a topic of conversation. <laughs> would I would I realize what it means that, uh, when you say thank you, Vax, speaking to the Raven? Um, you were like, not up here when he said that. Okay. Yeah. The only people who were up here at that time were uh, Mikit and Kreev. Uh, but please, join me by the fire. We don't have very long. Uh, you notice that the fire is already dimming a little bit as you're talking. Oh, shit. Okay, quickly. Ah. But... Um... What, what, quickly? What? I, I, I'm i still... I'm struggling to get out of, of the hole. Well, um, so Help. you need to know Help. something. Uh, that person over there seems stuck. Uh, do you need to go fetch them? It's okay. I will wait. Uh, Rite, help them quickly. I will quickly try to help them up. All right, athletics check, Rite. Can I use okay. just a bit of a <clears throat> suit here, but I believe if I double his right, he gets advantage on that check unless it's a straight strength checks it's kind of it's an athletic specific check all right doesn't look like he knew that anyways yeah uh, i was hoping you were gonna like minus kyle's weight so aride just like throws him oh yeah that's kind of what i was hoping for too. <laughs> but yeah you reach down you drag him up and uh the fire is still dimming everybody you're down one minute 
<laughs> right, maybe we should uh, ask oh. the questions we need to get answered. Oh, damn, oh. damn. Yes, um... Hello, sir. Um, uh, uh, what is your family's name? He looks directly at you, Arite. Oh, um, Bill's request. Bill's request. Oh, what a wondrous, great family that you have. Very strong, sturdy, perseverant as well. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. You said we are in a rush, so we sort of need to have some... Uh... Oh, my apologies. I, I have this issue where sometimes I can be uh, quite uh, storm-winded. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's an old joke. Uh, right, well, mm. uh, fair enough. What was the question we needed... So, um, Mr. Mr. Stormwind, um, oh, we are please, to... please, please. I am not Mr. Stormwind. I'm Tiberius. Yes, Tiberius. So we are after the tr the three trees. Do you know the story of the three trees? And it's oh, yes, yes I do. I know. Oh, yes. oh, uh, we don't have uh, time uh, to tell it now. I uh, uh, keep it for later. He um, looks at the he looks at the raven. They're very rude, aren't they? Well, Do you she's know? The time limit. Were we like this when we were? Uh, whatever. Um. Yes. Do you know where where the three trees are buried? Oh yes, I do. Okay. Now, I would ask you where are the three trees buried? Oh, so you do want me to tell the story? Oh, wondrous, wondrous, wondrous. Uh, so, just... the first two okay. trees are destroyed. Uh, mm. The one connected to Arcanum and the one connected to the Celestial Realm. Uh, both of them were destroyed in a raging battle here. Uh, well, before we were uh, divided as groups, but divided by ideals instead. Um, very sad time in our history, and well, I'm very glad that history itself has forgotten it. It's a... Uh, it's not something right, well, that you really want to be proud of for all of your people, especially when... Where is the uh, last they, one? Uh, uh, oh, uh, well, I'm getting to that part. It's just... Whoa, whoa, they have I'm... no... They have no attention, do they? It's... it's honestly, I you feel know, bad. You can... You can... There is a way of telling a story where you, like, start at the end, and then you uh, you go to the top. Oh, start uh, at the ending. Good. All right, let me think about this. Um, That is very curious. I can... um. Okay, so the end is I died, right? Um, <laughs> and going back from there, uh, now do I go back or do I start it? I don't go, sure. Go backwards. Back okay. To, uh, can, you, can you just start at the point where the tree buried? I'm sorry, all of this is very stressful for me. You're all kind of uh, getting uh, your tussles uh, uh, tossed. Um, mm, all right, yeah. everyone just calm down for a bit. Uh, uh, Apologies yeah. for my companion's behavior. It is quite all yeah. right. I am. Um... Well, uh, anyways, allow me to continue. If you wish uh -huh. to know all of this, uh, the fire is beginning to dim. Um, yeah, feel free. Yes. Um. So the one tree that was meant to signify the union between the two aspects, uh, Arcanum and religion. Um, that one was protected very closely by what would label later be labeled as uh, the Dragonites. Um, of course, that was to preserve its natural power and prowess for Arcanum so that those, uh, the Ravenites, which they developed into later on, um, were not able to manipulate it for religious service, which could topple down our entire research and development that we are were working upon, um, and as such, the tree had to be hidden away. Uh, a place that was uh, close by to our original stomping grounds back before we, well, were forced to settle our homeland of Draconia down towards the surface, um, but was far enough removed from everything that uh, the odds that anybody would actually find it is remarkable. And where is that location? Ah, yes, of course. You need to know the exact location. Um, oh, what was it called? Uh, Vax, do you, darling, do you, do you, do you remember what it was called by any chance? Uh, no, no. Um, well, uh, do all of you have a map? A map of any kind? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. to this kill. <laughs> okay. Oh, and somebody just fucking beeped really loudly. I'm not sure who it was, but ow. Um. 
They ha you hand over the map and he looks at it. Uh, what is your map of? Is the map of the of the ravine that Ravi gave us? Okay. Um. No, 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 no. This is not. Uh, we need one of uh the homeland, Wild Mount. Do you do you have one of Wild Mount? Uh, yeah, sure. And I go fetch my my stuff and I. Do you have a out... Wild Mount map? I have a Zohas map. Okay. So you grab the Zohas map and he takes it and goes. Uh, no, 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 no. I ah. Uh... Uh, it's a little bit more removed than that. Um, it's... I just press the digitation and, like, start creating a, a map as far as I know it, like a roughly sketch of of um, Wild Mount in the snow. Unfortunately, you don't actually know what Wild Mount looks like as a whole. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he looks at it and goes, Could all I right, have... all right. Um... Could I have a chance to know? Uh, did you ever purchase one? That's something you would have had to gone out of your way to purchase. So the the map that I have is the one that is represented here, right. like this this bit like of, of Western uh, Wyoming, um, Eastern Wyoming. So uh, here here here, I can show you as close by as we have it. Um, you, you see this little uh, open uh, basin here. That's called the Gehem Basin. Uh, more recently developed by the um, Empire itself. Uh, directly beside that, hidden away inside of the Stormcrest Mountains, uh, is the original home of our floating city. We used to go up and down this range all the way across, and as such, our um, uh, home tree is located deep within that mountain out there. Thank you for your assistance. Yes, of course. He looks at the fire. You all still have four minutes left. Oh, <laughs> would you look at well, that? We still have a remarkable amount of time. Do any of you have any, like, can you draw, like, a sketch of the mountain or something? The mountain range, where, sort of. Um, would you mind, Jero, sorry, I was taking notes and looking at the map. Can you, can you, would you mind pinging uh, the mountain that you were It's mentioning? labeled. Okay, so it's it's a mountain in the Stormcrest Mountain around it's, the G it's Gehen. It's in... That's it. Okay. Sorry, let me look. Make sure that is the right location that I told you. Uh, it is north of the Ashkeeper Peaks past the Gehem Basin inside of the Empire. Okay, so it's north of the Basin. Okay. No, 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 no. It's okay. north of the Ashkeeper Peaks before it separates, and it is uh, west of the basin. West of the basin. Yes, there's a very old place out there where um, Arcanum was developed much more pointedly. So yeah, get here, go west. Hmm. Now, of course, uh, uh, there's a few hidden ways to get in there. There is a um, a uh, waterfall that if you part, you can actually climb a staircase that leads directly into our ruins. Um, There is, well, a couple of other entrances, but those are on the other side of the world, so I don't think they're going to be of much use to you. Where is this waterfall, then? Oh, um, it is along the river from the Gehem Basin, uh, over towards the, uh, what was that place called again? Uh, Ustalak? Ustalak Lake, I believe? Uh, maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that is the best I can tell you. I'm sorry. It's, uh, <laughs> as you can imagine, has been quite some time, uh, since I thought about all of this. Uh, um, are those places that rings the bell to me just namely what i'm, I'm asking jero are, are those places of name that rings the bell no of me? course not no. you're from jorhas yeah okay however if rolrick wasn't uh. sleeping right now he would probably know a lot of this yeah. crap <laughs> i would have loved to, to wake him up but uh poor lad is is sleeping well, it's um, past 6 p.m. He has to be asleep. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, cool. Thank you very much, Tiberius. And, uh, well, uh, 
Well, we still have a few more minutes. Is there nothing else that you all uh, need assistance with? Uh, what what, do what you really know? happened with... Uh, okay, never mind. What? Go ahead, Hein. Go ahead. No, I, I was mostly curious about the rigid doom thing. Okay. Then go, okay. What do you know about the Silver King? The who? Can you say that again? Um, I didn't hear you. The, the Severed King. Severed King. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, that individual. Um, my family uh, was associated with one of the groups that thought it was best to maintain peace by keeping him separated from all of us. Um... Of course, this was Why? generations ago. I, rumor had it that um, he was an individual who uh, crest beyond mundane means of magic and comprehension of it. Um, someone who, though mortal, uh, could rival the gods in their capabilities and uh, potentially even discovered a way to rectify immortality. Um, which, in turn, would be an incredibly terrible thing to do. I mean, uh, uh, the point of the, you know, Age of Arcanum and the war that followed after was to stop all of that from affecting us, uh, to remove that amount of power from all of us. Um, and as a mortal who could have that type of power, it was something that we thought it was best to hide away. Um, again, this was long, long, long before me, but um, yeah, that's about uh, everything. You have one minute left. Uh, Do you know what? Go ahead. I'm, okay. I'm going to cast uh, guidance on myself and ask him. Uh, I notice you have uh, you have a lot of interesting items on you. It would be very helpful to us <clears throat> in our quest if you could maybe gift us with some of your magical items or anything that you have uh, oh um well the material uh, sort that's um quite can a I uh can i roll persuasion on that uh no um <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh well um thank you very much for all of that but um I, I actually quite like my keepsakes, and uh, I, I believe all of you will find your way and uh, develop yourselves. I'm sure you all look incredibly curious. You'll you'll be able to get there with your own capabilities, and well, all of those have very strong sentimental uh, value to myself. Yeah, uh, yeah. Don't worry. Uh, we'll leave them intact. I, he's the only one that was too curious about it. Uh, that's once again, yeah, it seems a shame to just let it lie here when no, your legacy can live on is. in the world, you know. It's... Once again, apology for Creep's behavior. He doesn't really know better. Well, if <sighs> I'm not needed to come back here uh, in, say, a hundred years or so, uh, feel free, take it. Uh, but I, I would still like to uh, look at it with fondness while I uh, uh, have the chance. The fire is down just about to embers at this point. Ah, well, uh, wonderful to meet you all. I hope you all are very successful in your endeavors and best of wishes. Uh, good luck. The fire fades and so does he. The rain. All right. You know, it never hurts to ask. You don't have to put on this uh, feigned uh, humility. <laughs> I use Maytan I use Maytan to give him one of those backhanded slaps <laughs> it, it, it kind of like grazes your face because it's a Maytan actually you know what are you I trying to I... seduce me <laughs> <laughs> actually you know what I think I agree with Kreev on this time <laughs> alright a little bit of pragmatism never hurt anyone I disagreed That's... because he said that is prepared so he can speak to the others when need be. It means ah! there's still a use and there's still a symbolic reason for it. And there is well, such a thing as due to the dead. Yeah. Uh, the raven well, does caw at you, Creve, and glares. I'm, well, because you understand what it is saying, don't you fucking try. 
Well, I, I, it's the reason I asked. I didn't uh, like go over there and take it, did I? I? Oh well, but he said we could be back in a hundred years, uh, maybe. So, it's just yeah. well, let's uh, let's rebury it properly. Uh, uh, some help, Rite? Rite, you're muted. Oh yeah, he's be right back. Oh, Fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's it. Yeah, yeah I'll do it with him. Alrighty, so the two of you take another couple of hours to rebury everything. The raven waits patiently on the tree as you do so to make sure none of you are trying to steal. And once mm-hmm. you are complete, it takes off flying someplace oh, else. I was, I was about to say uh, thank you to it before it leaves. I, I, I wanted to just, uh, even if I cannot speak to it, just see if it reacts. Does the name Vax rings a bell to me as a character? Uh, you're a historically influenced individual. Roll me history. And and I was born at this time, actually. You were, you were, but Jorhas was a bit removed from all of that. Uh, the name has a little bit of familiarity to you, but not something that you can easily discern. Uh, the only connection you can make is by the fact that you did learn Tiberius Stormwind was one of the legendary members of Vox Machina that maybe they're associated with that somehow, or maybe it's just that was his familiar or something. Who knows? Maybe he found a spell to keep a familiar it's, here permanently. That would be badass. It's, it's, so the name of the Vox Machina is not common knowledge. The name Vox Machina is the, not common knowledge within unlearned individuals of Zorhas. <laughs> it is common knowledge amongst anybody who is educated, which you are which is why you know Vox Machina as a concept, but you're not one of those people who like hardcore learned about every aspect of the group on an 18. Jorhas is a bit removed from it. Yeah, quite a bit actually. Yeah. Well, anyways, you all successfully rebury the site. Now, after that, it's been a very long day. And I think that you all need to get ready for your long rest. And we're going to take a break. So, everybody, we will be right back. 